The 15 Point Plan is part of the Winmate Give Podcast Network. Welcome to the 15 Point Plan Podcast. Chad Himes here, joined by the healthy Jalene Snell. How are you today, Jalene? Feeling very healthy today, Chad. Well, we're glad and to hear happy it. happy to be here. Glad to have you back. We've had some opportunities for some interviews with some others, and we've got some other interviews coming, folks. We have done some interview work because we are here in the influence category, and we're sticking here for a while because, boy, everybody has a different take in the world of influences. Wouldn't you agree, Jolene? There's so much to it, yeah. And it, actually, if anyone has recommendations for someone they'd like us to interview— and can make that connection, definitely send them our way. Yeah, if someone's had a huge influence on you, Mm. let us talk to them and have them share their story with the 15-point plan audience. Yet today, we aren't going to talk about a person with influence, yet we're going to probably talk about, in my opinion, one of the single most influential inventions in our lives. What's that? The television. The television. The television, Julie. Now known as the TV. TV. Yeah. The, you know. Like an old school They got all those it. names for what the TV was. The boob tube, the, you know, whatever it was. <laughs> I, I got to admit, I spent more than my share of time in a relationship with the television. Can I share a fun fact with you? Absolutely. About television is that the inventor apparently would not let his own children watch it. I don't know if that's fact or fiction, but it's interesting. That'd be a like type of theory. Alexander Graham Bell refusing to call anybody. Sure. Right? Naismith refusing to play basketball. That'd be <laughs> kind of interesting. And he was short, actually. So, okay, I digress. <laughs> yes, Jolene, we're talking about the TV. And there are certain moments in the world where the TV was the place you went. I mean, who shot JR? Everybody went to the TV, right? We're, 9-11, where did everybody go? They went to the TV to see what was happening. You remember, I mean, the most highly rated shows on television was the, sina- the finale of MASH, you know, the Super Bowl. And I'm looking at Jelena as I'm recording this, and she's like, I don't know any of these shows you're I don't. About well, yet. and to be fair, I haven't, I started watching TV at 18 years old. I didn't watch TV or have TV growing up. So, so you I and think, I are on the opposite ends of the spectrum. I think my perspective here. is very different, and, and I'll definitely share some of those thoughts as we go through today. Okay, and it was interesting. We had a little conversation before that I'm going to bring up again because during today's episode, I want to talk about probably one of the all-time most popular television shows. Hands down, no one's going to argue this one with me, except Jolene, who has never seen a single episode not of one. the show we're going to talk about I don't later. think anyone's going to guess what it is right now, so we'll have to leave them in suspense. Absolutely, and I left them in suspense after my interview with Bob when I told them that we were going to talk about one of the greatest television shows of all time. They're still waiting to see what show that is. It'll come at the end of this episode. Jolene, let's talk about the television. We did some research on TV. Here's some things to know about it, right? Other than sleeping and working, Americans are more likely to watch television than any other activity. Now, wow. you said you didn't watch TV till you were 18. Right. Okay. So other than sleeping and, and working and school being work, obviously, when we're younger, what were you doing other than watching TV? You know, I was socializing. Okay. I, was, I was, you know, playing with my friends and as a teenager and working 10 to 12 hour days. Okay. That, that was a fun thing for me to do. Yeah. And, you know, I'd be outside. I, you know, it, it doesn't get dark here in the summer until, what, 10, 1030, and I'd be riding my dirt bike or outside doing activities, and uh, didn't even think about TV. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Me, so, I know the TV was used as a babysitter in my house when I was younger. You know, I, I have to admit to using that a bit with my own, mm-hmm. but there's still something they haven't seen. Okay. We won't talk about that yet. Jolene, research shows that the quality of shows can influence us in many, many, many ways, shaping our thinking, even our political preferences, and affecting our cognitive abilities. That is some incredible influence when you think about it that way. Mm -hmm. Incredible influence. And it's amazing that someone that is not a person can have such a powerful influence. You know, television is one of the things that has killed the attention span. Mm. Because if you'll notice a half hour program on TV used to have two commercial breaks, now it has three. Because they've killed our attention span, they have shortened the shows to a point where 
we don't, we can't sit as long, so they throw the commercial break in. You know what's interesting about that too? I notice my kids are more likely to want to watch YouTube, which has two to five minute videos, versus watch a movie on Disney. Mm. You know, they have to have an attention span to watch an entire movie. Yep. But nowadays, they're catering to the three, four, five year olds with YouTube videos that are short and addictive. So years from now, when the 15 point plan is being hosted by my children and your children, right? When they're the generation, they'll be talking the influence of YouTube instead of the influence necessarily of TV, possibly. That could be. Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, tell us a little bit more. Okay. So in the golden age of television, some critics have pointed out that the best of the form is equivalent to the most enriching novels. So critics have actually shown us that reading a novel or watching some of the good television is very powerful and high quality programming for children can actually be quite educational. And I think everybody here, when I just say those words, immediately goes to a specific show on television for that educational thought, right? The latest evidence shows and suggests that there can be negative consequences to abundant watching, particularly when we're watching entertainment. You could turn it on and I don't know, we have way too many streaming channels in our house because we don't have cable. I could watch documentary after documentary after documentary after documentary. I could learn. I could be educating. Or I could watch trash after trash after mm -hmm. trash after trash. And really the concept behind this episode we're going to get into is TV's neither good nor bad. It's how we use TV. Okay. Right. I think it's, we don't usually think of TV or use TV as something that we plan and I think where you can make that a positive influence over a negative one is when you actually plan what you're going to watch. So maybe before you turn it on and something grabs you like that first image on Hulu, yep. which is huge. It takes up the entire, you know, length the screen, of the screen. Yep. You're like, oh, that's the one I want to get on, right? Yep. And it might not be the best one for us. It might be the Kardashians versus, you know, a documentary of some sort. So I think it could be just planning what type of show or the actual show or movie we might watch before getting on. Now, you have Movie Mondays. I do. Right. I watch a movie every week. Every week. Every so week. how do you choose that? By whatever it is I want to see or whatever other people have been talking about or whatever is just new. But there's a little bit to of me, planning. My, mo my movie is escapism. Yep. So to me, I, I look to escape. I'm not looking to learn from my movies. I'm looking for Nita and I to unwind on a Friday night and say... It's date night. We're putting on a movie. We're having charcuterie around the house. The it's, night's the night. It's is, an experience. That's it. Right. Absolutely. Now, I would turn to Dave if Dave was on a microphone because you mentioned something there about, Jolene, about planning. And, well, you didn't watch TV when you were younger. And our audience that's younger might not remember this. Dave probably remembers exactly like I do. Once a week, the TV guide showed up. And you did plan. Is this a paperback version? It was a okay. <laughs> magazine, yes. That, and you actually planned what you were going to watch for the week because we didn't have VCRs. We didn't have streaming Oh, DVR, Chad's dating himself right now. VCR, you know, we couldn't record this stuff. I remember TiVo, what, a, what an amazing breakthrough that was for that us. That really was. Before that, we did plan. Oh, no, I'm going to be watching this, Dad would say. So now we knew we couldn't have the TV or whatever was going on. All right, Jolene, let's, let's get friendly with TV. Let's look at the positive sides of TV. There are benefits. What's one of the benefits right off the bat that television can provide? Well, being educational, of course. Absolutely. I think it's feeding our brain with type of content that might challenge us or provide us with knowledge and information that we didn't know already. It's a type of, you know, we learn things like problem solving, language skills. It can increase our vocabulary, right? Mm -hmm. Our level of vocabulary our emotional skills, um, you know, knowledge on technology trends and uh, take action and engage in productive behaviors. Yeah, absolutely, Jillian. I can, I don't remember myself when I'm younger. I don't have those memories. Uh, yet I can look at my daughter and watch her when she was younger learning Spanish because she watched Dora the Explorer. I could see her learning sign language because she watched Blue's Clues and they would use sign language on Blue's Clues. I could see her learning things based on the programming that we watch. Well, you know, that, that, that makes sense. And that was, you know, however many years ago. And today mm -hmm. you can see the trend with the DIY projects. Yes. Most people, they say, you know, I've never laid tile before, but I watched YouTube videos or 
and I Chip went on and TV Joanna. and I found them. Yeah. And I learned how to do this project and it came out quite nice. And I'm always impressed by the people who use it for education and that, to solve that problem. It's a great, great tip to even as grownups, we can take it educational. The next one, Jolene, for a benefit of television? Sports. Yay. Yeah. Watching sports actually encourages us to want to go participate in sports and be more physical and the imagination that comes out of every, I don't want to say every kid, most kids have imagined taking that final shot or hitting that home run to win the game or, you know, hitting that perfect gymnastic because they saw it on TV and then they went out and they recreated it, which gets them active. Right. right? I don't know. I, I would argue that football does not make me want to go out and play football. No, might but, not. you know, it's going to do that for a certain percentage of the population. Yes. And... You know, sports can help create a community of fans as we come together. You see that with a team, and I'm going to use my Seahawks, our Seahawks, Chad. Nope. You're here too. Nope. And, you, you know, that team is known as a, a team where we have incredible fans. Yeah, the 12th like fan, the, sure. The 12th, 12th fan, man. exactly. Yep. And, um, and I think it does bring a sense of community. And this is for people who are not just attending games. This is for people who are watching these games on TV. Yes, excellent point. Does give us connection. The next one I've got was cultural interest, right? We learn about different cultures, encourage us to learn more about them, to travel. Think about watching food TV and seeing some of the places and going, oh my gosh, I want to go there and eat that. Or watching some show that's filmed somewhere and being, oh, I want to go to Hawaii because I'm seeing oh, Hawaii Five-O and it looks gorgeous or whatever you're watching. Every show, whether they're educational or entertainment in that purpose, can still create those cultural learnings and desires. The two names that stand out to me, which I bet our audience are going to identify with, is for one, uh, Anthony Bourdain. Of course. You know, may he rest in peace. Yep. His shows were amazing. Yep. You wanted to eat the food. You wanted to be where he was. You wanted to, like... Um, be in that culture. You wanted to speak the language. Like he made you feel like you wanted to be immersed there. Yes. Um, and of course, Rick Steves is well known for just documenting these amazing places and giving you that roadmap so that you can do it yourself. Yeah. So TV can have us learning about and wanting to learn about other cultures. The next one would be creativity that comes from it. So from cooking shows, you mentioned the DIY projects, decorating shows. It's teaching us creative ways to express ourselves, teaching us these things that we can go do and we can say, oh, I could cook that and whip something together with the family and create an experience or be creative and have that. And that's coming from television and watching some of these shows that inspire us to go attempt something new. Right. Just avoid watching ridiculousness to get creative. FYI. <laughs> yes. Excellent point. Excellent point, Jolene. And then the last one that we had on our list of benefits that TV can provide us would be? Stress relief. Yeah. You know, that one's big for me personally, Chad. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, with good TV choices and I think just having some portion control with the amount of TV great, that we watch. Great term. Yep. It can be a powerful escape. It can actually have a biological effect where it allows our heart rate to lower. Yes. And it can distract us from focusing on things that are worrying us that are beyond our control. That's and I've definitely found that to be true. It's a great, great point, Jolene. All right. So TV's good. That's what we've just said. Just turn the podcast off right now if you want to just know that TV is good and not find out one of the greatest shows of all time. Yet know that TV is good and just live with that. Or you can stick with us for a few minutes because we're going to talk about the other side of the coin. Because isn't it amazing? You could find good and bad in everything. I could tell you the good and bad of eating eggs. I could tell you the good and bad of drinking wine. I could tell you the good and bad of running, right? I mean, it doesn't matter. TV has negatives as well. What's the first negative, Jolene, that came up when we were doing our research on, on TV's influence? Well, it can steal your time. And yeah. time is our most valuable asset as humans, right? Yes. And overwatching can steal that time from other interactions and cause this social distancing from other humans. Yeah, not COVID social distancing, just true social distancing mm -hmm. where you live on your sofa and all of that stuff. Uh, another negative that came from it is a lack of focus because too much time watching TV can actually lead to a lack of being able to focus due to overstimulation. If you think about all the colors and all the flashing on the screen and how quickly camera angles are changing, we're just all over the place and it truly can lead to, you know, an ADD situation because we need that stimulation. 
because we watch too much TV. And then when we walk away from TV, we won't find that same stimulation stimulation in our lives because we're focused on something that's not flickering and moving and changing constantly. Right. And it's all being done for us. Yes. You know, we don't have to move a muscle, which brings us into the next point, which Mm -hmm. is obesity can happen when you watch too much TV, when you're that couch potato, and then you're grabbing the snack. I don't know what your favorite snack is on the couch. I don't really have a, I don't snack. It didn't matter. But, you know, popcorn. I mean, there's so many different things that we like to couch. And the problem with eating on the couch, as you're talking about here, and that couch potato term we have, Jolene, is when you grab some chips to just sit there, you look up and realize you've eaten the whole can of Pringles. Mm-hmm. And as we've talked about previously, I think that was something like five and a half servings, which is incredibly unhealthy for you. And you just down the whole thing without thinking Ooh, about it. It makes me like shiver to I think, think about, about that. being a kid. And, and Dave and I have had this conversation again, because Jolene will show our age and we watch TV as a kid. How many times, Dave, and, and he's not going to answer, he's just going to nod at me. Yet how many times did you go down as a kid in the morning, mom and dad were still asleep and you just grabbed a box of cereal and ate almost the whole box of Fruit Loops <laughs> watching whatever you were watching until mom and dad woke up. So, yeah, obesity is a huge mm-hmm. negative of television. Jolene, lack of productivity. Going with that lack of focus, it also leads to lack of productivity because we engage too much with TV and we push other things aside. What happens is we create a plan and that plan becomes irrelevant when we get sucked into television. Yes. And the worst thing that's probably happened in the recent years is the way that all of these streaming fl- platforms immediately have the watch next episode. And you take three seconds and the next episode is started and you say, oh, well, it's already started. I'm here. I, I, I binge watch a show um, in the last month and a half, two months mm-hmm. because I, Dare we my, ask? my kids were out of school. I, you know, I got sick. I had some time to actually do that. And it's rare that I will watch this much television, but I binge watched um, Outlander. Mm, of course and, you did. And, and of course, you know, yeah, it was so good. I, I'm, I'm going to admit this publicly, and I'm shameless about it. Uh-huh. It's so good. His but abs. it would just go to next episode. Yeah, the apps were great. Uh-huh. Next episode, next episode. So, yeah, and it will just, you'll, you'll say, you know what, I can stay awake for, for another half hour. That's it. Right? And then that half hour is where I was going to plan the day the night before. Correct. That so would eat into my productivity time. Yes. And then the last one is it impacts our self-image because we compare ourselves and our lives to those on TV. I mean, it's not possible, right? They're having the... First of all, they're using camera tricks on some of the things. And then they've got people whose whole career has been designed about, I have to look a certain way to appear on a show. And now every guy who watches Outlander, because his wife, girlfriend, whatever wants to watch it, looks at whatever his name is there and says, yeah, sure. Jamie. Yeah, Jamie, right? That, <laughs> no, not going to happen, right? Uh, with the abs that he has. Or you watch other shows and you watch these makeover shows where the homes are gorgeous. And now you compare your house to other people's houses and you say, my house doesn't look that good. Very true. It's a self-image issue that can come from it. So folks, we want you to understand there are positives and there are negatives to TV. Overuse can lead to negatives, yet strategic use can actually lead to positive influences from television. That's well said. So Jelene, I want to just talk about the greatest TV show of all time. This is the elephant in the room, isn't it? Sure. This is the greatest the TV show of all time. dinosaur in our case here. If you, have a, if you haven't figured out what show we're talking about yet, shame on you. You've watched it. Jolene is the exception to the rule. Jolene's the one person that I actually believe when she said, I've never seen an episode of it. Even I've seen an episode of Seinfeld, right? I say I don't like that show. Yet I've seen an episode of Seinfeld. Everyone's seen an Everyone, even if you what haven't seen the show, though. You know the show. Just tell us, Chad. All right, folks. The greatest show ever invented on television, Sesame Street. It was there for all of us. It was there for all of us. We all had a best friend on that show, whether it was one of the characters or whether it was one of the humans that was on that show. We all learned something, whether it was pronouncing words, whether it was numbers, the alphabet, whether it's a song. You know that you can sing who are the people in your neighborhood? Right now, without me continuing it, <laughs> you can finish it. Dave's singing the song in his head right beside me right now. I just wanted to touch on Sesame Street for a few moments, okay? Oscar the Grouch, probably one of the more well-known characters on Sesame Street. Actually, I think it was Dave's favorite, he said. Oscar the Grouch was actually designed to teach children about their positive and negative emotions so that they would understand that we're not always going to be happy and things are going to be wonderful. Big Bird was actually created to provide children with opportunities to learn from their bumbling mistakes because Big Bird always had mistakes. 
So there was a lot of research done behind Sesame Street. And researchers investigated if the educational outcomes among children who were under six in 1969 and who lived in certain locations where they had access compared to kids who did not have access to Sesame Street. Here's what they found. They found evidence through studying surveys of children's outcomes in 1980, so 11 years later, that exposure to the show during early years generated a positive impact on educational outcomes through early school development. Adolescents, adolescents who watch Sesame Street as preschoolers had been so positively influenced by it that compared with children who didn't watch it, they had higher scores in English, math, and science. They would read for pleasure more often and perceive themselves as more competent with lower levels of aggression from the lessons learned from Sesame Street. So folks, you got kids? Under six, trust me, find Sesame Street. It's educational. I'm sitting here in awe. I'm, I'm like, why haven't my kids seen this? You know, I, I know why I didn't see it. Sure. But, you know, you have me sold. I think there's a lot of benefits to it that you can see play out here. And you can find it streaming. We were doing some research because Jolene was like, wait, I don't have cable. It's okay. It's on Hulu. And it's on HBO Max. Okay. You can get Sesame Street still for your kids. I have a feeling that people over six might go to watch this too. Uh, folks, I probably could still sit down and enjoy and laugh at an episode of Sesame Street when Cookie Monster, Big Bird, Oscar the Grouch, Snuffleupagus, I, well, Elmo now, of course, Kermit the Frog making multiple appearances. It doesn't matter who. If you were a kid and you watched Sesame Street, you have the memories of these characters that will be with you for a lifetime, and you didn't even realize you were learning. We challenge you to check out Sesame Street. TV, it can be good. TV, it can be bad. It's up to you how you want to let that influence you and your world. We hope this episode ups your energy and takes you to the next level.